views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and welcome to Health Equity Now. I'm your host, Bill Latimer. In 1985, former Health and Human Services Secretary Margaret Heckler commissioned a task force on black and minority health that produced the Heckler Report. It was the first time in our nation's history that the elimination of health inequalities was defined as a national priority. The report documented chronic and persistent health gaps accounting for 60,000 excess deaths each year with differences between black and white groups across six categories accounting for nearly 90% of preventable death, including cancer, infant mortality, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. In 2003, the Institute of Medicine published Unequal Treatment, Confronting Racial and Ethnic Disparities in Healthcare, providing further evidence of racial discrimination affecting healthcare access and treatment. A review of over 600 studies revealed that racial and ethnic minorities were less likely to receive routine medical procedures compared to whites. Nearly 15 years later, many substantial health inequalities remain. In New York City, for example, people living in poor neighborhoods have higher death rates than those living in wealthier neighborhoods. As defined by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, health equity is achieved when every person has the opportunity to attain his or her full health potential and no one is disadvantaged from achieving this potential because of social position or other socially determined circumstances. The goal of our program, Health Equity Now, is to define the challenges facing our nation today and to celebrate the achievements of programs aimed at fostering health equity. Today, I'm excited by the focus we are placing on the excellent programs and research being conducted by faculty and students in the Department of Nursing at Lehman College, the City University of New York. So sit back. I hope you enjoy our show of Health Equity Now. Welcome to Health Equity Now. I'm Bill Latimer. I'm incredibly pleased and excited to be here with Dr. Catherine Alicia Georges, Chair of the Nursing Department at Lehman College, the City University of New York, President of the National Black Nurses Foundation, and President-elect of the American Association of Retired Persons, which has over 35 million members. Dr. Georges, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Dr. Latimer. My pleasure. So we're here today to talk about the absolutely wonderful and amazing nursing program at Lehman College, the City University of New York, and some of the programs that uh, it offers and the great training it provides to students and so on. Maybe you can start us off by telling us a little bit about the programs uh, that the nursing program offers or a little bit about the history perhaps. Well, the Department of Nursing graduated its first class in 1974. At that time, the Department of Nursing was the first program in the United States where health assessment and practitioner skills were taught to undergraduate students. So those graduates for the first 10 years were able to practice as nurse practitioners in the U.S. That's great. Since that time, we've grown our program. Our program has become more diverse and we've added additional programs in both the undergraduate and the graduate program. The graduate program has now one of the largest family nurse practitioner programs in this city, and we continue to graduate anywhere from 100 to 125 of those students each year. And each semester, we have anywhere from 50 to 75 of those students who come into our program each fall. We also have, uh, and we're the first online program here at Lehman College. So we have a registered nurse to baccalaureate online, solely online, sure. for those students who, are, who have difficulty in getting out of their work setting to attend college. We also have an accelerated program that we started about four years ago, where those students who have another degree come in for one year, and in one year to do the entire two-year program of our generic um, program, and they graduate and are able to take our boards. I have to tell you that we're braggers and we want you to know that uh, last year our state board's results were about 92% pass rate. 
That's fantastic. So that's all wonderful. Let me ask you this. So the first class graduated in 74? In 1974. Okay. So since that time, clearly there have been enormous changes in healthcare delivery, um, movement to population health, uh, movement to ambulatory care. What sort of effects do you see that having on the training of nurses and how nurses are being placed post-graduation at Lehman College and places like Lehman? Right. Well, I have to tell you that, you know, nothing is new. So back in the 70s, the thrust of this program was to make sure people were prepared as primary practitioners. Right. So the intent of the then founder, Dr. Claire Fagan, was to have graduates who could work not just in acute care, but who could take leadership in areas such as clinical um, practice areas in communities. And so we, for a while, as healthcare moved into the acute care setting, and those dollars were being spent in acute care, that's where the focus was for most of the programs across the country. Right. In the last few years, we found that it doesn't work, we hadn't changed health indices, and we needed to go back to doing something about the upstream problems. Right. So what we've done in our department is now preparing our graduates to work in community, work with populations in decreasing the morbidity and the mortality rates that we have for particular populations. So we're, we're having students in, in places like community centers. Our family nurse practitioner is the hallmark of what we know about preparing people to take care of folks in the community. Those graduates are only prepared to work, they can work any place, but they are really prepared to work in community and in primary care settings. Sounds great. So, and it's exactly in the, in the remainder of our show, we're actually going to talk to some of the experts in the nursing department at Lehman College to talk about those very transitions yes. in relation to two or three conditions facing uh, the Bronx urban settings nationwide. Yes, we are. So with that, we will be right back. So I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket again. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Welcome back to Health Equity Now. I'm very pleased to be here with Dr. Nora Campbell, Associate Professor in the Nursing Department at Lehman College, the Graduate Program Director, and also faculty at the CUNY Graduate Center. Nora, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Anora, I know that you have your work centers on adolescent obesity and overweight, uh, particularly here in the Bronx. Tell us how you got interested and how your work has uh, progressed in this area. Well, um, I'm a pediatric nurse by um, profession, and um, I've noticed over the years of how adolescents, really a lot of children have been gaining weight and of course the statistics um, support that. Um, but the other things that are happening here uh, in the Bronx is that and worldwide is that it's an epidemic. Um, the, the, you know, there's so many uh, of adults as well as adolescents that are overweight. Um, the reason I got involved with adolescents is because there wasn't a lot of research being done with adolescents. Most of the work had been done with preschoolers and school-age children, and really they were a forgotten population, the adolescents, mm -hmm. um, and they needed to uh, be a part of it because they're going to be adults soon, they're going to have families, and they're going to be purchasing and pr producing healthy foods for their children, hopefully. Um, mm -hmm. So you allude to the national epidemic. I think um, it's uh, fair to say that roughly about 20 percent of adolescents are obese and another 16 or so percent are overweight. So that's a nationally, so that's a very, very high number. What's going on? What are the factors here? Is it, is it individual behavioral choices? Is it the lack of availability of healthy foods uh, in complex urban settings? Clearly, it's a problem that's been around for a while and justly is getting a lot of press, but why is this happening? 
There's so many factors. Um, it's really a complex uh, issue. It's genetic. Um, it's socioeconomic. It's cultural. Um, you know, it's all of those factors. The Bronx uh, has, uh, in many areas, are food deserts. They don't have a lot of uh, supermarkets that provide healthy, fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, lots of bodegas, food carts, um, so that's a limited access to healthy foods. Um, depend the Latino and African American populations may tend to uh, prefer different kinds of foods that may be a little more starchy, but also understand that they there is a need for fruits and vegetables, which Latino populations eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, and African American families eat a lot of vegetables. But it's the balance of that, and the other thing thing is having the access to it. Uh, Anora, tell us about your impending uh, research and work that you you're doing uh, now here in our department and in the borough? Um, I've had uh, a recent relationship with uh, the Bronx Institute here at Lehman College, and I'm going to be working with some of the people within that organization and uh, some of the middle and high schools with uh, adolescents and their parents. Um, I had worked in the past with just the adolescents, just the teens, but since they're not independent and they have to get their food from their parents. Working with the parents and the teens has been something that I wanted to do. So I'm going to have a six week program. I'm developing the curriculum for that and it will be um, a program that talks about what they're eating and then some information about healthy foods and exercise activities. And then hopefully they'll carry that on after the program is finished because they'll have the information and, and they also the emotional piece of it will be included. That sounds excellent. So there you have it. Here at Lehman College, Dr. Nora Campbell taking on the epidemic of overweight and obesity in the Bronx, but also in complex urban settings nationwide. We wish you the best and thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you, Dean Latimer. Dr. George, it's right. we'll be right back. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to Health Equity Now. I'm very pleased to be here with Dr. Cassandra Dobson, Associate Professor of Nursing at Lehman College, Director of the Undergraduate Program in Nursing, and Faculty at the CUNY Graduate Center. Thanks so much for joining us. It is my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Cassandra, I know that your work has centered since uh, even before you got your doctoral degree on sickle cell disease with a particular emphasis on children and now your work has moved into uh, adolescents and young adults. Yes. Tell us about some of your work and some of the issues around sickle cell disease and that population. Well, oh, thank you, Dr. Georges. What I'm finding now is that the children are receiving better care as a whole and the young adolescents are not receiving the kind of care that they should. It's like they get dropped off um, and that's because we have not enough uh, health care providers to care for that population. So after age 20 we're seeing a decrease in health care professions to care for that population and then we're seeing an increase in mortality rates for those um, people. So it's my interest to try to um, get more information out so that we can start um, educating people to care for those patients with sickle cell disease after age 20, um, because that's where we're seeing the most problems. Let me ask you this. Is it, you mentioned that there's a lack of expertise of healthcare providers for yes. young adults, adults with sickle cell. Is it only that, or is there a health insurance coverage issue. Do, does the coverage continue past 20? Okay, all of those reasons are in the right thing. So one of the big reasons is that once the child get to be 21, um, pediatricians 
you know, they move to the adult setting. So there's no pediatrician. Of course, there's no health insurance either for that population because they're not under their parents' health insurance. So they just get lost in this um, pool of um, non-existence. So we're finding that they're sicker patients and that they have they just go on like it's okay not to seek health care when they're dying inside because, as you know, sickle cell affects the entire body. So we're finding that 21 and older have no um, health insurance or they don't know how to seek or navigate the system to get uh, SSI, which is an insurance that they can get. Um, so my goal in the community, I work with a lot of CBOs, community-based organization, to educate these people on how to navigate the system to get health insurance, which is a biggie. And there's not enough expertise after age 21. According to the ASH report 2016, we don't have enough health care providers to care for those population after age 20, 21. Um, so tell us about some of the things that you've discussed with us here in nursing and in our curriculum about how we can begin to thread this uh, and the care of this population as right. we try to bring um, health equity right. to the population with sickle cell. Um, in the nursing program, I find that most of the nursing students have very little knowledge about sickle cell disease because there's one little chapter in their med search book on sickle cell disease. And so there's such a a large um, array of information that they need to know. I would like to develop a curriculum to teach undergraduate and graduate nurses specifically about sickle cell disease and how to care for that population in the community because then they can become the expert in terms of the nurse practitioner to teach to help this population. Um, so that's one of my biggie. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is to use simulation labs as a part of their curriculum to educate nursing students on how to treat and take care of patients with sickle cell because there's no simulation lab that's specifically geared toward the treatment for sickle cell disease. Excellent. So yet another really important reason to come to Lehman College to complete your nursing education is to become one of those much needed nurses and healthcare providers that are going to take on the issue of sickle cell disease in the United States that has over 100,000 people suffering from that condition. Dr. Dobson, thank you so much for joining us it today on Health pleasure. Equity Now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lattimore and Dr. Georges. And can I get my girdle now? <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. We'll be right back. Uh, welcome back to Health Equity Now. Mm -hmm. Our next guest today is Wanda Johnson, adjunct lecturer in the Department of Nursing and president of Sigma Theta Tau Honor Society, International Honor Society, the Delta Zeta chapter here at Lehman College. Welcome, Wanda. Thank you for having me. Um, in mm -hmm. your work, Wanda, as an adjunct lecturer, here in our Department of Nursing, you've concentrated on work in the community with your students. Tell us about what you've been doing with those students around the issue of the aging population oh, yes. and increasing uh, population health and uh, achieving health equity with this population here in our borough. Okay, I'm so happy that you asked that. Yes, the clinical assignment for the registered nurse students or the students that I teach, they're registered nurses who come to Lehman College to obtain their Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. The clinical assignment, we work at the senior centers of Rain Incorporated and Neighborhood Shop. In that, we place our focus and our emphasis on community-oriented nursing more than community-based nursing. Community-based nursing, as you know, is focuses on illness. We focus on health. 
We also focus on the delivery of culturally competent care because we do feel at Lehman that when we teach our nurses how to deliver culturally competent care, we address their social, the cultural, and linguistic needs of our communities. At the senior centers, we provide educational offerings to the seniors, primarily in English and Spanish, but we have the capabilities because we are so diverse. We have provided education in Chinese, Korean, Bengali, Albanian, Italian, to name a few, Tagalog, we can go on and on. But the key is, as we look at the world that we're in, as we do this, we not only promote health, we protect health, we preserve health, we maintain health. By doing that, we eliminate health disparities, and more so, we promote health equity. That's what we do. That's wonderful. So if we look at the epidemiology of aging in the U.S., we know that there's well over 45 million people in the United States that are 65 and older. And we know uh, in the American Association of Retired Persons, there's 38 million members that are 50 and older. So clearly, it's widely known we have an aging population. How important is physical fitness, regular exercise, diet? Um, given your expertise, if you had to pick one or two things that you really wanted to focus on with the populations you work with, what would you be doing or what are you doing? Um, a lot on I'm talking about nutrition, health, because the two major issues that we see that is dominant in the community is diabetes and hypertension. So a lot of the clinical sessions revolve around that, those two topics. So I would say exercise, health education, and nutrition. Uh, do you think that what the work that you've done and your encouragement in having people come to the center has done um, much in helping to decrease the loneliness and isolation oh, yes. that we're seeing with the older American um, in, in the U.S.? I see one of the things that I'm really pleased that we have these clinical placements, you see it prevents isolation. The seniors come together in the morning sometimes to get their meal in the morning. They get their breakfast, they play dominoes together, they're engaged in games, they have exercise sessions, they have nutrition sessions, and they have the education sessions. They have dancing, they have sewing, computer technology, and you see them come together and it, it really prevents isolation and depression. So we're, good, we're happy about that. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So yet again, another uh, important topic that's being addressed by nursing here at Lehman College, the City University of New York, is promoting population-based health among older adults in the Bronx, New York City, and beyond. Thank you so much, Wanda Johnson. We'll be back in a moment. We are there, day one with baby names and a gift that lasts a lifetime. We are there as you grow, protecting you and those you love. And we are there as you start your next chapter. We are with you through life's journey. We are Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. Get to know us at socialsecurity.gov. This video produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Welcome back to Health Equity Now. We're back with Wanda Johnson, our adjunct lecturer in the Department of Nursing, and two of her students who are recent graduates of our program and who have also been inducted into our Honor Society, the Delta Zeta chapter of Sigma Theta Tau. Uh, and Wanda, could you introduce your students to our audience? Sure. We have Isohe Orioko and we have Fidelis Carrasco. Both registered nurses. I'm so proud that just obtained their bachelor's of science in nursing degree. That's so wonderful. <laughs> and welcome, uh, Wanda, and to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. So, congratulations on your graduation. That's Thank you. absolutely fabulous and wonderful. Thank you. Um, why don't you each uh, take a little time and tell us a little bit about the RN to BS program that you were in uh, at Lehman College? a little bit about what you did, a little bit about your community-based work. We'd love uh, to hear about that. So the RN to BSN program more so focuses on the community, um, the generic focus on acute care, but we as RN to BSN focus on the community. So we go into senior centers and we teach about diabetes, hypertension, we screen them for high blood pressure, we check their weights, 
Um, we definitely involve more in teaching because we feel like there is a need for teaching when it comes to especially the senior centers, the senior, um, the elderly people. Um, we teach them about diabetes, hypertension, ways to live a healthy lifestyle, exercise is very important as well. So all this definitely comes into play and it's very important I, with the RN to BSN program. Excellent. So. So pretty much she said everything. We also like reinforce what they already know about like their conditions, medical conditions, which they know a lot about their conditions, just someone, they need someone to reinforce what they already know. Absolutely. So giving support. Support. Yes. So tell us what you're going to be doing now that you've acquired your baccalaureate um, degree, definitely. where you work now, and where, what, are you, what are your plans? I work at Calvary Hospital at the moment. I definitely intend on coming back to Lehman to um, continue on my family nurse practitioner degree, and um, I'm very excited about that. So I work in a clinic, an um, urban health plan clinic. I'm not too sure if I want to do the nurse practitioner or midwife, so I still have some decisions to make. Great program, but bear in mind, we're looking at 100% job placement here at Lehman College in the Department of Nursing. Keep that in mind. Um, Wanda, tell us a little bit about what are some of the things that you try to focus on in the RN to BS program? What are, what are some of the core competencies or experiences that you want to see the students get? Well, the one thing I want them to learn that the world that we live in is changing and they must change as well. That the culture of a person never changes and then when they deliver culturally competent care, they recognize it's not their culture that comes first, it's of the person who they serve. So that's one of the things we really try to stress. And we try to show that everyone is really equal. And we focus on all communities, regardless of their race, their gender, um, their sexual orientation, that we must show respect and treat everyone with dignity and do no harm. So if anything that we, um, we impart with our students is to make sure that everyone is well respected and that culture, above all, must be respected. Mm -hmm. Well, Wanda has done a great job in, um, in promoting the RNBS program and in fostering really a great relationship with partners that are now are very mm -hmm. well entrenched with us in our delivery of healthcare here in the Bronx. And so we thank Wanda and her students for paving the way for the students that will follow and for the relationships that will continue as we move to um, population health and, as Dean Latimer says, health equity now. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let me echo the thank you very much to mm -hmm. the students, to Wanda Johnson, mm -hmm. to Dr. Cassandra Dobson, to Dr. Nora Campbell, and certainly my colleague and collaborator, Dr. Catherine Alicia Georges. That's it for today for Health Equity Now here at Lehman College at the City University of New York. Take care.